Things are really getting interesting in the world of The Expanse. I think I'm most intrigued by Avasarala really starting to put together like this proto molecule thing. It's much more than meets the eye. It's life. It's it's dangerous. Everyone knows it's dangerous, but she's she has more information than everyone else. And I just love that she is an absolute legend. And I can't wait to see just I don't know, man, she's a player and she's going to have a huge part, I think, in whatever happens in the well, certainly the political dynamics of the worlds. It's going to be wild. I also really hope we see uh, like the aftermath for Bobby after her testifying her testimony. How's she doing with everything that just transpired? I would like to her to, I don't know, have someone that she can just talk to about everything that's taking place. Someone that's really on her side and not just using her or to maneuver whatever political thing that they want, peace or otherwise. Of course, the crew of the Rossi, that's that's where we're at. That's where we need to really that's that's maybe priority number one today. OK, as they are embarking to find Prax's daughter and, and Strickland. Very interesting. Whew. I do wonder, Melissa, when we last left, she was on the ground rightly weeping on the oh, the oh man, the title of their ship just became even more impactful in my mind. Uh, <laughs> Is she going to hold that against the, the Rasanate crew? Probably. Maybe even rightly so. Uh, her partner would not have died if it weren't for them. That's just kind of the, the reality of it. And, and yes, they were trying to do the right thing. And, and yes, okay, I think, I think more than likely those people were going to kill them. Melissa as well, no matter what. So maybe Melissa will be able to see that. But I mean, you know, when you're blinded by grief, maybe not. Or maybe we pick up after they've left and we never see Melissa again. Although I doubt that. Either way, we're in for something special today. I think it's going to be a good episode. Well, it's always a, a pretty good episode, isn't it? Let's experience episode 10 of season two for the very first time. Okay, so they've already left the ship. Melissa's probably still weeping. Shouldn't have left her alone. She didn't want us there. Correct. We got her husband killed. Those cops were going to kill them both. It was the right move. And I keep telling myself that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes doing the right thing still feels like the wrong thing. It's very, it can be painful, especially young. How many people have you killed? This is a perfect example. I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure? Well, I'm not a homicidal maniac. <laughs> Old and Naomi, they're not like me. They're better. I'll watch your back, but they'll find your little girl. Man. Amos' awareness of his role in the team dynamics here is so good. Where was Strickland when he took May? Ganymede, pediatric care, clinic seven. Let's see if anyone who worked there is still around. They're all in Act Dome nine. This way. Um. I still love the staples on his head, man. <laughs> Sergeant Draper failed. And then she snapped because she couldn't deal with it. So you think she's lying? I think she's crazy. Still, <laughs> I wouldn't mind getting her in a room alone. Sam, I've been saying that. Mars is using peace as a distraction. Mm. Peace as a distraction. God, I wish I could disagree with you right now. <laughs> a man standing on the surface of Ganymede without a vac suit. You absolutely sure about that? You think I'm crazy? You believe what you saw is true because you need it to be true to explain how your team was killed. So what happens now? Now you go home back to Mars. I saw it too, if it helps. I'd like to see the ocean before I leave. I mean, come if on. It's possible. Sorry, you're under restrictions now. Oh, but you mean I'm a prisoner? No, I mean, you're a Martian. It takes weeks, sometimes months to acclimate to these open spaces. You saw what happened when we stepped off the ship. I want her to see the ocean more than I've wanted just about anything in my whole life. Can we <laughs> make that happen? She's been working hard to acclimate to the sun, harder than I bet anybody else has. I didn't show it in my edit last week, but there was other stuff to see, but this has been happening. She's gonna bust out. Oh, she's gonna try. She was found in the wreckage of the egg dome. I'm not talking about soybeans. I mean, exotic biologicals. Protomolecule. I have no idea where Dr. Strickland is. Have you seen any patients with any kind of bluish modeling or unusual heavy skin growths? Good question. I haven't seen anything like that. What is it? Something we heard about. And don't spread it around. People don't need anything more to worry about. It doesn't feel like Eros, does it? Definitely not. Maybe it just hasn't started yet. It could be something related, but different. 
maybe Protogen was performing different types of uh, experiments with the protomolecule? This yellowing indicates a nitrogen imbalance, which means that something got in and killed the good bacteria. Is that a hard fix? Under normal circumstances, no. Gosh, I got it. Is that you? What? What the frick? Coward! Coward? Our children are out there somewhere, and you just leave. He her. didn't. You just. Oh. He was unconscious. If May's still with him, then maybe Katoa is too. We gotta show this whole thing to Roma. We we gotta go right hold now. Hold on, hold on. Who's Roma? He finds people. He doesn't take script. Only only barter. He likes he likes chicken. Only only canned chicken. That that works the best. Canned Wait, chicken. That he works for food. He's got a place at the AWP corridor. She's an exemplary soldier who does what she's told to. What's wrong with you? Sit down. Interesting. I've never seen him so shaken and emotional. I think she did see something on Ganymede. I believe that Ganymede was a test of a new weapon that Jules Pierre Mao is developing for Mars. Based on technology he unleashed on Eros. Hmm. You've been in contact with him? I don't no. think he has. I did last week. Of his weapons research. But he got cut off contact. Mal. Because I was working with him. Oh, he came clean. Wow. You've known for a while. Ever since you had Frank de Graff killed. I know it makes no difference, but I had no hand in that, Christian. But you covered it up. You protected Jules. This started out as a conversation about peace, about the discovery of this incredible proto-molecule. He got taken for a ride. Phoebe. This was a way to guarantee the safety of the Earth. At a terrible price. If I had known what was going to happen on Eros, I would have stopped wow. the project and Jules Pierre Mao along with it. And you know that! Eros nearly destroyed this planet. You will have to answer for your part in that. I know. Mm. And I will. This is the first time I've liked Aaron Wright. This is everything that I know about the protomolecule project. Yes! I'm not ready to declare like an MVP of the episode, but Aaron Wright gets most improved. If Bobby gets out of here and gets to the ocean, then uh, she'll be the MVP. Just because I would love for her to have a happy moment. Does anyone ever get a truly happy moment ever again? I don't know. Anything's possible. Wow. Yes. This has to be so hard. Like that landing, as well as the effort it takes for her to make these jumps. Ooh. Oh, sweet. No, no, no. Don't break a bone. Don't break your bones. I think she's lucky that she didn't break a bone. Why am I singing it? I don't know. It just kind of came out. Oh, that was so nice. I'm so glad. Mama's place should be somewhere around here. Looks like no one's got a place around here. Yeah, their whole lives fell apart. Life on Gamma Mead will never be the same, at least not for a very, very long time, or years, decades, maybe. You Roma? Who Roma? There's some people in the station we need to find. Heard Roma's the man to talk to. Ah. Well, then he is Roma. In that case. We need to find her and the man with her. And we need to find him quickly. You got chicken? That's what I like. I mean, you got enough here to feed half the station. Put that back. This guy just wants to find his little girl. We got rations. Protein bars. No chicken? Back of the line. Oh, Amos! No. I had a feeling Amos was gonna do something. He can't find me if you bash his head in! What's wrong with you? Are you gonna help us? Absolutely. I find little girl. Pro bono. Yeah, you will. I was just thinking, we need to take all his food and distribute it. I mean, there's people starving out there. It's not good business for everyone else around you to suffer while you live in excess. Well, on the other hand, maybe that is good business, but it makes you a bad person. <laughs> this is kind of like our first glimpse of uh, life on Earth, Earth on the ground. Excuse me, do you know the fastest way to the ocean? Oh. 50 I do <laughs> just pick a direction one way would be shorter than the other admittedly a lot of activity around Sergeant Draper's quarters because she's no longer in them Ooh, go find her officer Allah. go find her take her to the ocean and have a long talk 
You have to find her as quickly as possible. I'm on it. Russians will, of course, be trying to find her as well. But there is a severe disadvantage on the streets of our planet. Make sure they're stopped frequently by the local authorities and checked for proper identification. She's going to make sure they're at even more of a disadvantage than they would be on their own. Are we information sharing with Aaron right now? I think we are. I'll tell him later. Why haven't you turned him in? At this moment, he's more useful to me outside of a jail cell. Something changed with Aaron Wright. Yeah. Maybe when he saw Ares hurtling towards Ares with no way to stop it and realize what he'd put into motion and only miraculously avoid it, that it was time to make amends. <laughs> I'd forgotten how it felt to be fighting for the good guys again. I like it. It's nice. <laughs> Right, like obviously, Ray Aaron and I did some really unfortunate things, and it's like, yeah, he should probably pay for those things. On the other hand, people who have resources and are working with you and can really give you some insight, especially for Avasarala, like we don't want to just throw those away. And he, he is different now; he changed. And Avasarala is a great judge of character. I think she could see that, and he's a resource now. I think. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Don't take it personally. Clinic stopped giving Peter his meds two months ago. But I can tell you how to get to the ocean. Okay. I don't have any script. You're Martian, aren't you? You love Osteoex. Give me what you can spare and I'll tell you how to get to the ocean. You're a drug dealer. They're not gonna fly you to the moon. I know what Osteoex is for. I can trade that and get a month's supply of meds for the kids who've been exposed to radiation from the drive plant. And I can probably get a month's supply of the new chloroquine. Hmm. It'll save some of us from dying in the summer when we're forced to drink sewer water. Wow. Uh, so you're a doctor? Of sorts. Put myself on the vocational training list when I was 17 years old. Still waiting? Still waiting for my slot. Jeez. We still got to take care of ourselves down here. It's crazy to imagine like, so many people just waiting for an opportunity to work, to be productive, to do something. It's not a life. Everything we've been told about Martians is probably garbage anyway. That you're all a bunch of robots with no souls who just like to conquer sh Oh, and I hear your music ain't nothing to write home about neither. Well, that part might be true, yeah. <laughs> Go back the way you came until you see a drainage tunnel on your right. What's your name? Bobby. Miko. He has kind eyes. Feet planted in line with your shoulders, back straight, head down staring at your toes. Raise your chin slowly. In a couple of weeks, your brain will forge the pathways, your inner ear will get the memo, and you'll be no different than an earther. Thank you. Oh. Now you. This is really great. Was Nico even ever really there? I mean, he was. This not that. This isn't the haunting of Hill House. Okay. He just he took the opportunity to just. Poof. I hope they meet again. I would have stopped him before it went too far. Thing we do makes the next one that much easier, doesn't it? That's how it works. I mean, why is it so easy for Naomi to hide uh, the proto molecule from Holden? You said you weren't a homicidal maniac. I didn't kill him. Facts. He's a bully. And where I come from, bullies take desperate young girls like your daughter and force them into prostitution. And when they finally get knocked up, they peddle them to Johns who get off on that. After they have the kid, they push them right back out on the streets even before they have a chance to heal. And those kids, they use them too. Some people deserve to be punished. Wow. When I learned the clinic had been destroyed, and when I had to accept that May was dead, I felt almost relieved. She was sick her whole life, and I couldn't fix her. I couldn't help her the way a father's supposed to. Are you asking me to tell you that's okay? I know it's not. What a fascinating moment, both for Amos and for Prax. I mean, dang, maybe it's not okay, but I think a lot of people would feel similarly. It doesn't mean you don't love your child. It means you're frustrated for not being able to give them the life that they deserve. Same yellowing as before. They're using distilled water in the hydroponic supply instead of the proper mineral solution needed for long-term stability. Air, the scrubbing plants, what's left of them, will die off. 
When that happens, they won't be able to stop the cascade. When one thing goes wrong, there's only a certain amount of pathways that can compensate for it. Eventually, those pathways get overstressed, and then they fail. Everything. So it's not the thing that breaks you that you need to watch out for. Dies. Exactly. Yeah, but Ganymede is the most important food station out here. They're not going to let it just collapse. The station's dead already. And they just don't know it yet. Man. Oh, Alex, just chilling, huh? Is this his vacation? It's not going to last forever. I hope he's enjoying it while he can. I'm so lonesome, I could cry. How many of those has he had? CRN priority alert to all vessels into Jupiter AO. A no fly zone is now in effect around Ganymede Station until further oh, notice. Oh, crap. Any unauthorized ships entering oh, or leaving the zone bad. are fired upon without warning. There he goes plan A and plan B, I think. They'd be moving way away oh, from boy. the battle and where the mirrors fall. Those part of the station still be okay. That's all this part of the station. No camera after that. But if you want to find her, that's where you gotta go. What's down there? How do I know? I like the idea of going to the oldest part of the station. She made it to the ocean. This is what she wants for Mars. I don't know that Mars could ever have this, but she's finally getting to experience. I don't even know the right word for it, but this, what word would you use to describe this? I just love this for her. <laughs> Feel the sand between your toes, Bobby. I love this for us, yes! Is it everything you thought it would be? Yes, 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 yes. We never finished our conversation. Mm -hmm. The thing you saw in Ganymede, it was real. Here, this is what attacked you and your team, isn't it? Oh my, Project Caliban. It was being tested on Ganymede. Tested? By your own government. You, ma'am. Sergeant, I wish to God it was my government. Then I would have some control over the situation. All I have is you. So you're telling me that me and my team, we were sacrificial lambs? And your friend, Travis. I don't believe it. And I don't believe it. thing you were told to say in that room. I need to know who is doing this and why. I need your help. This has to be a mind game. You are the enemy. We cannot afford to be enemies anymore. Ooh, come on, yeah. We need to go now. Okay, we just dropped some information into her lap. Let her sit with it. So very, 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 I can't say very enough times to emphasize how very interesting I think this is. Probably would have been an excellent moment for a more expansive vocabulary word. Whew. Now the Martians have found her. And that was the end of the episode. I really liked this one. I just love <laughs> the, honestly, Bobby going to find the ocean like that. It's a, it's a different kind of story for the expanse, but I absolutely loved it. Just so simple and significant and meaningful for her. And it's just nice that she got to have a great moment of happiness of whatever before Abbasarala comes on and drops some bombs now when Aaron Wright suggested that uh, the Martian government was experimenting with this weapon I had wondered if that was conjecture and I know that was conjecture I had a few weeks ago as well but I, I've kind of wavered on whether or not I think that's actually uh, a thing or not, could Protogen actually be working with the Martian government to experiment with the protomolecule? Is Protogen working on their own for their own purposes? And maybe they're just working with anyone and everyone for whatever. I don't know. I'm not totally convinced one way or the other. But how interesting if the Martian government was experimenting or working with Protogen to develop this weapon. Terrifying. And how interesting the Avasarala could just drop that information into Bobby's lap. And of course she thinks Avasarala is lying. I don't think Avasarala is lying. I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't think she's lying. Like she genuinely believes that to be the case. And maybe it is. 
Time will tell uh, what is actually true or not true. I'm just along for the ride. I've said uh, before, I don't know 100% sure if I left it in, in the edit or, or not, but I'm not the best at theorizing or conjecture. And uh, I just trust that when things are are revealed, it'll be worth it. <laughs> and I'm along. I'm along for the ride. I'm not the I'm not the detective. I enjoy mysteries, but I'm not the one sitting there trying to figure out the mysteries. And any conjecture or theorizing that I, I do come up with generally doesn't come as I'm watching something. It comes usually later. I guess maybe that's why I enjoy taking my time going through these and not rushing through or binging the the series. I, I enjoy week to week, getting to know the characters, getting more immersed in the story, having a little bit of time just to kind of think about it and sit with it and hearing different perspectives from patrons and channel members. Um, and of course, YouTube comments as well. I just get those eight weeks after I've moved on from that episode. But yeah, please tell me all your thoughts and theories about all of this in, in the comments. I want to hear from you. I want to engage in, in those conversations. I think it's so fascinating and interesting. Wow, that, I really loved this episode. So, of course... Meanwhile, on Ganymede, we have oh, I I like that in the midst of this investigation, look at this looking for the daughter as that guy was doing his work and whatever. We got to just kind of hang out with Amos and Prax and do some a little bit of character development. The more we learn about Amos's past, um, you know, he's not just muscle. We've known he's not just muscle for a little while, but I'm I'm starting to see even more how protective he is i think at his core amos is a protector and i think that's really really great i mean we know he had latched on to naomi and was really following her lead following her orders and i wonder how much of that was not just because he was a henchman who needed someone to follow and and, and doesn't trust easy but maybe it was like this protective like i'm gonna protect and when he finds something or someone who he does trust or can and I don't, I don't even know exactly what i'm trying to say i'm just kind of sorting through it but when he like like holden now he trusts that holden has morals and he trusts holden's sense of morality and so he's gonna follow that and he's gonna protect that like he wants to do what is right and follow what is right but i don't know if he trusts himself to always know what is right so he maybe leans on others for that please tell me your thoughts on that am i way off base am i circling something i know it's kind of hard to talk without spoiling future episodes so um tread carefully and uh whatever i i just love the show i, I i'm excited to get to know these characters and i do feel for prax i feel like when you have a child and i don't i don't have children and I, let alone a, a child who is dealing with illness or special needs of some kind i can only really i can, I can only imagine and trust from stories and stories that I've I've heard from from others, but I can only imagine like the weight and the guilt a parent might feel with a, a child that is suffering or is not as healthy as you want, right? Like you want the best for your children, you want them to be healthy and successful, and and to set them up to have a, a, an incredible life, and when you don't have the resources or feel powerless to be able to provide that for them. And you can't just wave a, a magic wand and make a child healthy. And so for a dad trying to be there for his little girl, but unable to make her just healthy has to be really, really hurtful. There has to be a weight. And of course he wouldn't be relieved that his daughter died. Okay. Despite how that was worded or presented there, and, and Amos says, you want me to tell you that's okay? Well, like, no, he's not relieved that his daughter died, but I can imagine in the midst of that grief and sorrow over her passing that there also would be kind of like a sense of I'm, I'm done. I don't have to carry that weight of insufficiency anymore. And I feel that. But at the same time, I think he, the idea that his daughter is alive is way better for him. I'm really excited to see where this goes. And I, I, I'm enjoying, honestly, I'm, and maybe it's not the most interesting part of the expanse, but I, I'm enjoying the biology talk, the discussions of how the, those plants work on, on Ganymede. And it's like, I kind of want Prax to be able to save Ganymede's uh, ecosystem for food that's obviously that's such a significant thing for the belt and i'm, I'm very i'm i'm 
what if they really do lo lose Ganymede Station? Like, for real? What if they're not able to produce anything anymore? Like, in a few weeks, if the, the what do they call it? The Cascade. What if that happens and it's all gone? Is that going to happen? I mean, the, the belt's already struggling enough, and now we're going to actually... The idea that they might now be without their greatest food source is really upsetting and, and scary, terrifying. Who knows what happens in the future? Well, you do, probably. <laughs> I can't wait to continue watching this show. Thank you for being here and experiencing this journey with me. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, I don't want to say this about every show that I watch. I only want to say it when it's true. But The Expanse has been a true highlight. It's something it's becoming one of my favorite shows. The, the further into it we get, the better it gets. And, and the more compelled, the more compelling I find everything. And uh, we've introduced or we focused on uh, several new characters this season, and all of them are really, really great, especially by the time they start interacting with our core cast. Like, I'm so excited and invested. That scene with Bobby and Avasarala was pure gold, and I want more, and I know we're going to get it. And so thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. Bye.